The gigantism that can be legitimately ascribed to Berlioz and his music arises from two aesthetics, one of them quite apparent and the other more subtle. As a romanticist who thought of music in literary terms, Berlioz sought to express himself in sound with the greatest possible realism. If he wanted to depict the Day of Judgment, musical abstractions and metaphors were of little interest to him. His goal was to create an effect that would make his listeners feel as if they were hearing and experiencing the end of the world, and if it took hundreds of performers to accomplish the task, so be it. But there was another reason why Berlioz called for such large forces in his works. A fundamental difference between Berlioz and his predecessors lies in the fact that the content of his music is inseparable from its instrumental, vocal, and ensemble settings. To a great extent, if a symphony by Mozart or Beethoven is played in a transcription for piano, the work's expressive content can still be heard to good effect. This is not the case with Berlioz, who was oriented towards storytelling and sound painting, and wished to have every possible sound color and sound color combination at his disposal, the gigantic ensemble serving as a sort of ancestral synthesizer. And these two realms of sound, the monumental and the subtly detailed, are abundant in Berlioz's Te Deum. Although Berlioz wrote his Te Deum between 1848 and 49, the roots of the piece were established almost 20 years earlier. Upon returning from a year in Italy in 1832, the composer found himself recalling the stories of heroism he'd heard as a boy about Napoleon's triumph in his Italian campaign. He began to work on a two-part grand military symphony about the great general that would reach its culmination in a Te Deum, a sacred work based on the text of an early Christian hymn of praise that was a regular part of French military celebrations of Thanksgiving. Berlioz composed a few sketches, but the project stalled, and some of the material he'd written ended up being absorbed into his next major work, the symphony Harold in Italy. Nonetheless, his wish to write a large, celebratory, sacred work remained. An 1847 visit to Russia, where Berlioz heard the Imperial Chapel Choir, 80 voices strong and divided equally on both sides of the altar, was the likely catalyst for the composer's taking up the Te Deum project in earnest. Although the work's gestation was lengthy, the process of its composition was straightforward and was complete by October of 1849. Berlioz's score calls for two large mixed choirs, a large children's choir, a tenor, an organ, and a large orchestra consisting of quadruple woodwinds, pairs of trumpets and cornets, six trombones, two tubas, timpani, percussion, twelve harps, that many are rarely used in modern performances, and the usual string section. Among their many uses, these massive forces allow Berlioz to indulge his interest in using the performance space as an instrument, a concept he first explored in his Symphonie Fantastique and then used to create the staggering sonic effects in his Requiem, where his distribution of four brass bands at assigned stations around the hall turned, in the words of Sanson, the entire edifice into an organ. This idea is present from the first bars of the Te Deum in the chordal calls and responses between the orchestra and the organ. Berlioz referred to the overall effect of the piece as colossal, apocalyptic, and Babylonian, qualities that some critics considered inappropriate in a sacred work. But it's certainly this grand vision, this willingness to entertain the impossible, that continues to make Berlioz and his music so fascinating and compelling. Wow.